And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul Durienzo. Got a great show again for you this week. My guest, Philip Van Aver. Welcome back, Philip. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. All right, always we, great we've to have you. We've done many here. programs together, and all my far-flung acquaintance access them on YouTube. Well, that's true. They, you're a big, you're a big presence. You don't even have a computer or a yes. smartphone, and yet you're a huge presence on the internet all over the world. Well, w we're going to talk to, uh, this evening about. Council member Miriam Friedlander, mm -hmm. who died at age 95 in October of 2009. She'd be 100 years old today. Yes, or well, 100 years old in, in April. In April, but okay. it's ve it's very fitting for us to do this program this evening because just this afternoon, I learned that on uh, Sunday, October 19th at noon, there will be a street naming for Miriam Friedlander. And this will occur at the corner of 2nd Avenue and 6th Street. Miriam Friedlander lived for many years on 6th Street during the time that she was active politically before she became a council member in 1974. And, and she was living there at the time of her death uh, five years ago. Mm -hmm. How long was she a city council member? She began in 1974 and she lasted until... Well, M Miriam was elected in 1973 and the discussion we're going to have this evening is going to be some of it will be chronological but must some of it will be my recollections of Miriam mm -hmm. Miriam was a city council person for 18 years this was before term limits and the first encounter I had with Miriam was in the would have been in the spring of 1973, when I heard a knock on my door, I, I live at, on, on East Sixth Street between A and B, it was the evening, and I answered the door, and there were two ladies with petitions, and one of Miriam was petitioning to get on the ballot, and I didn't really know much about her at that time. I wasn't really very as politically involved as I subsequently became. And Mir Miriam, Miriam was was successfully elected and 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 and, and reelected. Now, a little bit of background about Miriam Friedlander: she was born in 1914 in Pittsburgh, and her family soon moved to the Bronx. And Miriam's, from what I understand, Miriam's f family were more or less upper, upper middle class in, in nature. She was not a, a, a resident of the tenements. And Miriam... Um, Do you know where she lived in the Bronx? No, I don't, I don't know. I've never, I've never, I, 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 I never asked her. Mm -hmm. uh, M Miriam was very reticent about questions about her life. We, we can talk about that. But Miriam w would have been 20 years old uh, in 1934, uh, she experienced the, the, the Depression, World War II, and because of her leftist sympathies, she's very much associated with, with, with the McCarthy period in New York. Mm -hmm. And Miriam... Um, Did she know the Rosenbergs, or was she involved with that? I have no way of knowing. Mm -hmm. I one time I asked uh, Miriam Friedlander whether she knew Eleanor Ro had never met Eleanor Roosevelt, and she said we traveled in different circles. Now, I'm going to show a few photographs of Miriam. This this is a brochure that was passed out at her memorial service in November of 2009, and this is a picture of Miriam, more or less as I remember her from her early years on the city council. And this is a picture of Miriam and her brother. Mm -hmm. This was a younger brother who was killed in the Spanish Civil War. He yeah. died in 1937. And I didn't know this, or, and Miriam, Miriam didn't tell me this until Hold quite on. a few years later. And of course, this is a picture of Miriam when she was a young woman. 
Wow. Um, so the sh her brother fought in the Spanish Civil yes, War in the Abraham Lincoln Brigade? Yes. And uh, so he was killed there, right? Along with Hemingway. He, uh, he wasn't well, killed there, but he fought anyways. there. And, uh, and the rest uh, of these uh, folks. M M Miriam, Miriam also lost other very cl close friends of hers. M uh, in the uh, Spanish Civil War? Yes, her, her circle of, of progressive leftist Jews. And mm. this is why do they go to? Well, well let, let, okay. uh, let me. I just want to finish showing the pictures. And th sure. this is this is a much later picture of Miriam with Bella Abzug. And Bella Abzug was a very prominent New York politician, a congresswoman from the Upper East Side, and um, as as you can tell, she and had the hat. Mi by Mi the way. Miriam <laughs> Miriam were very chummy. Uh, turn on, turn around, yes, show it for okay. a second. Give, no, give no, no, this is a picture of Miriam. More or less as she was as a city council person, yeah. she would have been in her 60s or 70s mm -hmm. when this picture was taken. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to, since we right. ha since this was, I said, was produced for her memorial. Right. And uh, you, you asked why um, Miriam's circle of, of friends, in case of men, of course, the, the as, as some of you may or may not know, the Spanish Civil War broke out in 1936, and it attracted volunteers, both on the fascist side and on the, on the Republican side, from all over. Mm -hmm. And the Abraham Lincoln Brigade was founded. Uh, I don't know if it was founded specifically in New York, but Miriam attempted to have street namings after. The Abraham Lincoln Brigade, but for some, but even in the 1970s, it was still a controversial issue. Now, as I mentioned, Miriam became the city council member uh, for the Lower East Side and Chinatown in 1974. And 1974, p people sometimes ask me because I'm a longtime resident of the Lower East Side, what was the worst period? And I have to say, it was around 1974-75. That was the period when, if you walked across towards Tompkins Square Park, you would see burning buildings above the, above the trees in the park. And when there was a population loss of about 100,000 in her district. And as I said before, her district included Chinatown, which was really one of the cornerstones of her political career was her support in Chinatown. Now, during the period when Miriam was first a member of the city council, um, there was widespread abandonment of buildings throughout the city, in the Bronx, Brooklyn, uh, ev even, even areas above 14th Street where there were in individual. And so the, the, there was a really a battle over what would be done with this housing. Miriam felt that it should be for public purpose, or the majority of this should be for, for, for public purpose. I was speaking today, before I came up here, with a woman on my block who was uh, in a homesteading group, which she said was founded in, in 1980, you see, and, and, and Miriam supported the um, homesteading movement, and this was in direct opposition to the preferences of what then became the Koch administration. And some of the issues that we'll discuss this evening, in my personal opinion, were, uh, uh, and, and, uh, is because of the fact that there were those who, who wanted this pro to privatize this, this issue. And that, that What do you mean by privatize? That's pri a, a lot of these are terms that people, young people today might not know. They might not know that a neighborhood where apartments go for $4,000 a month nowadays was abandoned. Was abandoned. Well, what, 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 just a few decades uh, ago. Uh, during during uh, Miriam's, I believe it was her second year, se mm -hmm. second term, they managed to have what was called an embargo on auctions. Prior to this time, the administration was simply selling buildings on my block for a dollar. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this was halted, and there was what would be a more reasonable 
way of disposing of this property. And, and, and Miriam felt that it should be for low and moderate income housing. There were the others who wanted a market rate. Is that is that a, uh, answer your question, Paul? And would I would you say looking at it today that her she failed in that? Well, it's very ironic in uh, in, in 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 analyzing Miriam's accomplishments. Mm -hmm. They are not exactly the ones she would have preferred to be at the head of the list. Mm -hmm. For instance, some of my friend, younger friends who who uh, access her on on the internet. She was always a supporter of gay rights. She came, as I said, in, became council person in 1974. That's five years after Stonewall. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know what her personal feelings was, but she always supported gay rights in the city council mm -hmm. at a time when the uh, speaker of the, of the city council, Tom Cute, was very opposed to it. Secondly, uh, those of you who are familiar with the uh, area where I live, Paul lives, yep. uh, the, the, the Tompkins Square Park section of Lower East Side. There are numerous community gardens. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the reason they have those community gardens was the, uh, the, 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 the city, the Koch administration, wanted to sell this empty land. Whereas Miriam, as I said before, wanted some orderly means of disposing of it. Meanwhile, <laughs> the city started allowing gardeners, rather than the, the allow these lots to be just junkyards, to, to the garden. So the gardens survive, whereas many of her the programs that she and I worked on were more or less dissipated. Mm -hmm. Like the uh, to use this, the money from the sale of the that's the cross subsidy right, plan. properties to finance low and middle yeah. moderate well, income it, housing. It, it, it never really worked out that way right. in in well, the end. But I'm I'm just right. I'm in just, a way, you're describing it was such a land rush. Well, it was a tsunami yeah. of of money that no no these plans that seemed so promising well, in the 1970s couldn't hold well, well, hold back. One of one of the factors, of course, there was not only that the the um, a severe recession of the 1970s, that was followed by one following the 1987. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also one in 1982. Right. There <laughs> were know, numerous it, recessions. You know, you know, it's boom, uh, boom, boom, and boom. All, all of these affect the housing market and, 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 the, the, and the political uh, mm -hmm. uh, atmosphere at the time. And uh, Mir Miriam was, uh, was defeated following the uh, reapportionment of her district in 1991. Mm -hmm. And I'll just backtrack for a moment. Sure. Paul Dorienzo and I met um, during the Tompkins Square Park riot of 1988. Mm -hmm. And uh, Miriam uh, has a son uh, whom I'm in touch with, who, who lives out in California, is a college professor, and she went out to visit him uh, in August, and she left of 1988. Well, always. I mean, she right. she, she, she it was she, a summer vacation. The, the, you know, and she she and Miriam left uh, New York to, to for California mm -hmm. on August 1st, and on August 2nd there was a meeting to close the park. First of all, it indicates that she would have been opposed to it. Right. If they wouldn't have had this meeting <laughs> if Miriam was in town, and. As a result of my position on the Parks Committee of the Community Board at that time, I was invited to a, a, a meeting at Gracie Mansion chaired by Mayor Koch. After the riot happened. Yeah, the, the, this, was, the, this was on the 10th. 10th the, the, the riot was on the 6th and the 7th. The meeting that I went to was on the 10th. And this uh, is uh, for people who don't know, let me just br briefly backtrack. The riot, Tompkins Square Park riot was a, a really one-sided, and I think the word police riot, which at the, that time was controversial, would be a, well, that a fair That wasn't what they planned. Uh, right, it was a, <laughs> that right, wasn't it was what the, the, the it a police was a, riot, well, maybe what the police had by mind, but Mayor Koch, I just want right, to finish The police this, just attacked that, people that, in the neighborhood. That, that, that I, I asked the mayor a question regarding the community board. I don't remember specifically what the question was, but instead of answering my question, he took the time to personally attack Miriam Friedlander. Mm -hmm. And he said, Miriam Friedlander appoints the community board. Well, of course she doesn't, Borough President Dinkins does. But at the 1991 
redistricting, um, the outcome was to uh, remove Chinatown from Miriam's district. So in other uh, words, they're uh, saying uh, the riot happened because Miriam Freelander well, and her leftist friends were coddling a bunch of losers well, 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 uh, who stood up to the police and made the well, cops well, well, look well, bad well, that, because that's your they interpretation, are Paul. responsible for beating the crap out of people yeah. if they stand up to them. But, but anyway, <laughs> Mir 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 Miriam became an anathema. But I think you agree with some of what yeah, I just Mir said. Miriam became an anathema right. to the political establishment and they right. got rid of her by redistricting, putting her in a district that would be very difficult for her to win. Yeah. And so she was defeated in the, uh, that would have been, I think, the 19, uh, the, the, uh, the, I, I'm not sure exactly, the election was 91, 92, something like that. So, so that, uh, that, that's her, 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 her tenure as, as a city council person ended after 18, mm -hmm. 18 years. And but she was, was replaced but, by? But, but Antonio Pagan, who was a real estate a, a puppet of the real estate industry. Ap and that's not an exaggeration. Yeah. I and, think he'd be proud to say that. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm just saying that her position uh, was one which, which made her a target. Her position about the city-owned land. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think looking back on it now, was uh, would all the forces, like the real estate forces and all the people who opposed Miriam be happy with how things turned out now? I mean, rents are 4000 a month. Uh, well, you know, my uh, feel... My and it's the buildings are just as run down as they ever were. Well, well Bloomberg is happy. Yeah. And the people... Uh, but I'm not even sure that the, uh, the rezoning that went in in 2008 that was put forward by the uh, which rezoned our uh, the area where mm -hmm. Paul and I live. Um, I I rather doubt whether the local landlords are happy about it. I think that it puts them in competition with international finance, who is you know taking over from the local landlords. That's my opinion. I, I you know what. I have my landlord and several other landlords I know. The local guys who used to fight all the time, they're like surprisingly enough somewhat more sympathetic than they used to ever be and yeah, a little because well, they I'll, feel breathing on their neck. There are a couple things about Miriam yeah. I'd like to touch yeah. on. Yeah. And some years ago, it was 2004, I was invited to participate in a fundraiser at some ridiculous restaurant on the Bowery. And they were 10,000, the, the tables were $10,000 each. And I went as a guest, <laughs> needless to say. <laughs> and I found myself sitting next to the person who had purchased the table. And I'm not sure he wanted to sit with me, but that's the way it works out. It's a little bit like sitting on the subway or something <laughs> of that sort. So anyway, to make, uh, we, we were having polite conversation. And at some point I said that m my involvement with political uh, uh, activities on the Lower, side, Lower East Side go back to the Miriam Friedlander days. And thereupon, Aaron Sosnick turned to me and said, she was a communist. And I wasn't going to argue with him. It was a social occasion. And I really had very little I information about whether uh, M Miriam was very discreet about talking about her past. And one time, I asked Miriam's cousin, who was someone who I was very friendly with and worked with politically. He was a longtime teacher at Seward Park High School. And I asked him about this, you know, and he, he didn't uh, 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 cut it off. He said, I really don't know. You know, you know, he wasn't covering up. And whatever Miriam's political affiliations were in the 1930s when she was in school, I mean, she she went to 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 hear. She surprised that she survived the 1950s. Yes, well, well, she she was mar a married housewife in Queens. She she was married d during World War II. She had a son. She was a housewife out in Queens. She came to the Lower East Side. She founded a um, political club called the Phoenix Democratic Club. And the only person I know who's a member of this club is, a, is, a, is Chino Garcia, uh, Ch uh, Carlos Chino Garcia. From Charis and other things as well. Yeah, but yes, but, but that indicates, you see, that it was a very inclusive club. It, right. it was a club that reached out to right. people across ethnic lines. And, 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 one, and a conversation I had with her, she once told me uh, that uh, the uniqueness of the Lower East Side and what brought her to love it was its diversity. She said to me, 
there is no place else in the United States, not just New York City, but in the United States, which has the diversity that exists in the Lower East Side, and that that was always the reason why there was so much like, you know, name calling communists, this and that, because uh, just like Hitler didn't like Austria and Hungarian Empire, a lot of people don't like yeah, well, 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 places I, I, where people live together of different races. And well, I think that that is much more the key to Miriam's political ideology than any any formalized leftism. Right. I, I the knew diversity it, uh, of the neighborhood is exactly what conservative and right-wing no. people hated. Miriam Mir Mir was a member of the Village Independent Democrats, which was a, she, she, when she became a city council member, I don't think she continued her, the Phoenix group. I, I'm not sure what happened to that. But she, she was a member of this club, which was basically a centrist club. Uh, it supported Mario Cuomo for, for, uh, for governor. And uh, I, 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 uh, in the, in the year, uh, one other aspect of, of Miriam that's important to people to realize is she was a very educated person. And I, so I was talking to so one of my neighbors who, who, who was lived in one of these homestead buildings, and I told him that Miriam Friedlander and another resident of our neighborhood, they're the only people I ever saw, ran into at the Mus Metropolitan Museum of Art. She was a very cultured person, and she, you know, I'm not interested in her travels particularly. That was her passion, however, what, travel. what, what was travel, uh, you know, she, you know, uh, uh, South America, the Antarctic, and all this kind of thing, China. Mm -hmm. How are we doing for time? We have uh, six more minutes. Okay. Well, do you have any questions that you want to ask me about, Paul? Well, you're going fine by yourself. You're telling me the whole <laughs> yes. story. Well, I just, uh, you know, because in the end, um, she lost a lot of progressive support in the end. And, and I remember towards the end, people were saying that uh, she had f really failed a neighborhood after the Tomkins Square Park riot, and there was a new movement of squatters and anarchists and punk and real radicals, estate developers. <laughs> right? That were, tell me more, what do you say well, to, no, that, I, to I, those no, charges? I, I and then she was not no, really a friend of those people. I, I supported Miriam in her last run, uh, her, her run and I, I did not support her when she ran again. And uh, I felt that uh, it was time for somebody else. And uh, uh, Mir Mir Miriam continued, you know, I wanted to just mention one little thing about her. Uh, after she and I became friendly, um, she'd ask me, if, you know, we'd meet on the street corner mm -hmm. and she, uh, she said, you want, you want to come up and have a cup of tea? And she lived in, in, a, uh, in a, t a tenement apartment on 6th Street. And I presume it was an apartment that she had mm -hmm. rented when she became a single woman again, like probably in her early 40s. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was decorated more or less like an apartment. It was just a one-room apartment. She lived very modestly. Mm -hmm. and, and she had works of art that, that uh, uh, some of which she had painted and some of her friends had painted. She, she lived very modestly, but she left a considerable estate. You know, she was not a poor person she, uh, she, uh, uh, in, in, in her old age, and she remained very effective. Uh, uh, when I, someone called me today to inform me of the uh, street naming, I said, a m recollection of Miriam that I have is Miriam, this would have been in 1997. Um, mm -hmm. So Miriam was, was, was in her early 80s, and there was a party, a victory party, for uh, council member elect Margarita Lopez. The guests included, Nidia, uh, the speakers included uh, uh, Deborah uh, Glicker and N Nidia Velasquez, and of course uh, Margarita, but Miriam was the best speaker. Miriam was a person who could analyze issues extemporaneously in a very concise manner. She had a voice sh that you could hear to the back of the hall. Mm. I mean, there are those people who remember Miriam as somebody who was at a meeting said, shut up, 20, 38 times. But I prefer to remember her as she was 
at that at that uh, uh, mm -hmm. in, in the basement of Nativity Church on Second mm -hmm. Avenue. Right. So she wasn't. So maybe people who had issues with the community board and issues with the city might have been a little put off by her sort of imperious nature at times. But actually, you saw her from a different direction where she was a firebrand, a woman, a radical, somebody who represented a thinking. In a, and in and a represented, she wanted to represent Against all other, her enemies who almost were, 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 were I hate to say, but ignorant people often. Well, you know, the, the, fascistic. What, what they wanted, they were after. Miriam, money, money, money. money. Miriam always would ask me, who profits from this? When, when I, my opposition to the rezoning, like yeah. who benefits? I just want to, 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 to announce the, the, the... Yes, let's go. We're going to talk okay. about the street naming. It's happening. When's this ha when is it happening? October 19th. That's a Sunday at noon at 6th Street and 2nd Avenue, renaming the street after Council Member Miriam Friedlander. And were they able to get this through? Was there any opposition after well, no, all the well, well, controversy? This with was her actually voted on by the City Council in December 2012. Why it's taken so long, I don't know. F curiously enough, I thought there would be opposition on the block from the community s synagogue, from my landlord, Mattel, who has his offices there, but I was told that the, the synagogue approved it and uh, the, the neighbors approved it. Uh, and these are conservative people, conservative forces on the block, you're saying? Well, well, no, I, I, well, I mean, fear. Your family was Jewish. Why would I, I fear? I fear that there would be opposition to it. But you know, like anybody who hangs around a, a, a long enough in our society, as Miriam does, they become respectable after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Just by being survivors, right? Yes, yes. And, and right. Miriam spent the last years of her life struggling to stay in her apartment, struggling to be independent. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, at, at, at age seventy-five, I'm entering the last chapter, so I know what that's like you know, b b tr trying to maintain your, your independence. And she did till she was 95. I mean, I was surprised when I heard she died. I thought she was going to live forever. Well, people do live a long time, but Mir Mir Miriam was uh, an extraordinary example for people can have a political career and maintain their independence and their integrity. And Mir 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 Miriam probably turned a blind eye to some of the shenanigans that were going on. Mm -hmm. You more or less have to. Mm -hmm. Philip Van Aver, thank you for joining us on Let Them Talk. Hope to have you on many more times. Okay, well, thank you, And, and it'll be it's far from your pleasure. last chapter. Thank you.